Hi, welcome to my channel. My name's Hayley and I am a mum to three little boys ages five, three and two and we've been home educating our eldest since January of this year. So we took him out of reception in January, we've been home edding since then and it's now September as I'm filming this so he would be just about to go into year one at school if he was still there. So I thought that today I would just do a video about what our home ed curriculum is going to be for the coming school year. Um, we don't really, we're not exactly structured, we're what I would call semi-structured with our home ed approach. We do some workbooks, he does like doing workbooks and I prefer using them because I just find it easier for planning and just to be able to refer back to and know that we've covered certain subjects and areas as well, I prefer them. Um, so we do use workbooks, we also use apps, we have some days where we don't do any work at all and we'll just go out for the day, um, so we are quite kind of open in our approach to it and um, we don't have a strict timetable that we stick to. I have a loose schedule of things that I like us to achieve on certain days but it is loose, it is changeable. Um, we are quite active members of the local home ed community so sometimes we'll just decide that we're going to have a day out with local home edders and we'll throw the plans for the day out the window. So yeah we are quite kind of flexible in it but at the start of the school year I do write a loose timetable and I do do some planning just so that I know what topics we're going to try to cover over the coming months and yeah what the aim is for the year basically. So I'm going to quickly talk you through what our home ed curriculum is for the coming year. Okay so I've ordered rather a lot of workbooks, um, I got them all from Amazon, they were all pretty cheap, everything that I've ordered workbook wise came to under £50 which considering when you see the amount of workbooks that I've got I think that is actually pretty good and I am an Amazon Prime member as well so I didn't have to pay delivery so I'm really happy with the purchases, um, they are a brand that I've not used before, I usually buy workbooks from places like The Works and to be honest I always find them not quite suitable because they tend to be aimed at children who are in school so they tend to be like designed as a homework kind of supplement that, that's a supplement learning that the children are doing in school rather than being kind of the sole learning that they're doing around that subject. That's what I've always found with the workbooks that we get from places like The Works. So I had a look, I did some googling and I found that Schofield and Sims workbooks came highly recommended by other home educators. So I thought I would give them a go and I'm really impressed with them. I think they're going to be brilliant for us. They are quite colourful, the activities in them are quite fun. I think that my son is going to really enjoy them. And yeah, they, they cover a lot of ground. So I'm going to give you a quick talk through what we're going to use. So the first books I'm going to show you are the ones that I have bought for English. So this is the Schofield and Sims Writing Words book. It's from the Get Set range which is aimed at reception age children. Um, I've bought some different kinds of, you know, ages ones. I've bought some reception and some key stage one. I don't stick 100% to what age group they're supposed to be in. I prefer to just see where he's up to and which ones are going to be better for him to use. So yeah, I've got a bit of a mix. So this one has got some really good activities. It's got some things where you like copy and trace the words, unscramble the, the words and put them in the right orders. Some activities where it gets you to trace the words and write the initials. Label four things in the park that have double letters, so it's getting you to look at words with double letters, which I'd say that's about where we're at at the moment, he should be doing things like that. We've done things like th and ch sounds, but it'd be good to just go over them again just to make sure that he's clear on them. Words with A-I, E-E -E, and I-G-H, which is definitely something that we need to look at. And then further into the book, it getting you to look at things like captions, getting them to decide what each character should be saying in the captions. Then it's looking at vowels, missing letters, capital letters, making sentences and yeah 
I think that's going to be a really, really good starting point for us with English for this year. And then we've got an early comprehension book. So this is things like, it's asking them to find what things they can see, find some things that don't belong in a bathroom and mark them with an X. So you've got all the animals and things like that. I think you'll find that quite fun to do. It's getting them to do some spot the differences, to put the story in order. Put, draw a, thing, a circle around things that Kamal needs to keep himself dry on a rainy day looking at the order that things happen in, so asking them to order what happens first. Looking at finishing the story and what happens next, so quite a lot to do with order and things like that. Things like this are probably going to be a bit too young for him, things like looking at what goes on land and what goes on the water but it's still useful for practicing letter formation and things like that and I think he will enjoy it so yeah we'll definitely use that one and then I bought two of these basic skills books I bought basic skills one and basic skills two so this gets you to do things like look at patterns and finish them off um, try to make things the same looking at odd ones out um, labelling parts of the body and getting you to write the words out. Again, doing more of making things the same, write the names of creatures that you can see. So yeah, I think that one's going to be useful. And then the Basic Skills 2 book is kind of just doing more of the same, things like patterns and then jumblies. So jumbled up sentences that they get them to put in the right order to make sense of them looking at how to do more than one so plurals of words finishing the story looking at where are they so the squirrel is what to the hedgehog and it's got a choice of words to use so yeah I think that one will be useful as well then I bought I only bought one spelling book because I tend to do spelling tests with Tyne anyway where I'll just give him a list of you know I'll say some words and get him to spell them and then I'll mark the spelling test and he likes to do that so I wasn't sure about buying a whole spelling book because we can kind of do it on our own anyway but I thought I'd just give one of them a go and it looks okay it's just getting them to do things like write in the missing letters um, and looking at kind of different, again, different sounds, the oi sound and the a sound. So it will be useful, um, but I think we will carry on doing our own kind of spelling test as well, because he does like those. And then I got a grammar book, so teaching them about things like capital letters and full stops, using and to join words, using and to join sentences, verb endings, so yeah I think that one will be really good. I think we probably leave that for a month or two before we move on to this, possibly a little bit longer. This might be one that we use after Christmas. Um, it's looking at punctuation and things like that as well and writing in sentences so I don't think he's quite there yet but it's definitely one that I'm hoping that we'll be able to move on to this year. And then I bought a handwriting practice book for key stages one and two. And so this gets you to write out certain letters and practice them, which is definitely something that we need to do more of. Um, quite a few different letters to try. Then capital letters, which is good. We definitely need to practice capitals more. Smaller letters, letters with tails. Um, copying a message and then at the back moving up to copying a whole poem so again I think it's going to be a little while before we get to this but it's going to be good to start with it anyway and then so that's everything for English we also use um, the explode the code book as well which we are probably about halfway through so we will probably finish explode the code before we move on to these 
And then I also picked up the technology book. This is the Understanding the World range. They do a couple of different ones. They do the world and people. Um, so I might get those as well. Again, they are possibly a little bit young, but I just thought that they were something fun for him to do and anything that encourages him to do some writing and things like that is good anyway and I think he'll just like the topic so it's getting them to kind of get familiar and recognize different kinds of technology giving an opportunity to talk about things like road safety um, yeah it's just um, just quite a nice one just to make sure that they fully understand these sorts of things really. Um, I think this is quite nice, so drawing a line to show if the food should go in the fridge or the cupboard, I think that's quite a nice talking point. So I just thought that was quite a fun one to do. And then moving on to maths, pretty much all of the rest of these are related to maths, so we've got quite a lot to work through. Um, so first up I got the Space and Measure book, which teaches them about things like big and small, tall and short, over and under, near and far, position, um, distance. He, again, it's possibly a little bit young for him. He does have a good grasp on things like this, but I don't think it hurts to just go over it. Ordering by weight. Things like times of the day and days of the week would be good for us to go over, I think. Um, and definitely things to do with units of time and clocks. We definitely do need to go over that. And then money and coins as well. And then we've got shape and pattern, again, from the get set range. So, again, possibly a little bit young for him. Um, and I was in two minds about whether to use this for my eldest or whether to use it for my nursery age son. But I'm going to see how we get on because I think things like carrying on patterns and things like that would be quite good for him to do. And there is quite a lot of things like continuing patterns. And I think symmetry is going to be a good one for us to learn about as well. Then we've got adding and subtracting, which is obviously pretty self-explanatory. Um, but I like that it covers things like fewer and more than and things like that. Um, so I think that you'll quite enjoy that one. And then we've got counting, which again is pretty self-explanatory. I think it just makes it fun to do things like drawing the candles on the cake and stuff like that. Though recognising numbers up to ten, sequencing five sequencing to ten sequencing back from five writing numbers counting to 15 he seems to he knows how to count really quite high but he misses the number 15 every time so i think this will be quite useful for tackling that problem um and then we've got key stage one maths so just basic maths um color the wheels to make four in different ways and write the numbers how many pennies time long and short um the dice game i think he'll enjoy doing that um picture sums let's go shopping so yeah i do want to do some work around money so i think that's going to be really useful then we've got first mental arithmetic which is i'm pretty sure that's key stage one um but again i think this is going to be something that we use more towards the end of the year because they are quite a bit more complicated um, so yeah, things like Jemina has four beads, Sarah gives Jemina another six beads, how many beads does Jemina have now? So I do think that's going to be more towards the end of the year that we use that one, but it's good to have. Um, then we've got problem solving, key stage one, which again is things like longer and shorter. Um, area is going to be a good one to cover again an after sweet shop kind of money activity how many are left how many altogether full or empty so yeah i think that one's going to be really good and then i've got some more kind of specific math subject ones so i've got a book about fractions so understanding the words whole and half i think that's probably about where we're up to at the moment beginning to use the notion of half um understanding the word quarter so again i think this is one that we'll kind of dip in and out of throughout the year and hopefully by the end of the year we'll have kind of got to grips with that and the same with this one which is telling the time so it's teaching them about different kinds of clocks about numbers and hands drawing the hands on the clock and yeah learning about units of time as well 
So hopefully throughout the course of the year we'll work through that one. It's good that it covers like months of the year and stuff as well. And then I've got a Learn Your Times Tables book as well. So again, I think this is going to be more towards the end of the year. Hopefully that we move on to this, but it's just good to have it in now anyway. So that's all of the workbooks are quite a lot there I did also buy one for my three-year-old as well for him to do while the older one is doing his workbooks I just got him nursery writing they do do a whole range of nursery workbooks but I just thought he'd see how I'd see how he gets on with just this one first and yeah it's just to teach them kind of how to hold the pen and um, to draw lines and things like that and about the odd one out so I think he'll quite like that so that is all of the workbooks. Then resource wise, I picked up some of these math cubes again from Amazon and they're really handy. We've used them before when we're working through different workbooks and I do find them really, really useful. And I also picked up some play money as well for when we're learning about um, money, basically when we're going through the workbooks and learning about money. I thought it'd be helpful for him to have some money to use. So again, they were from Amazon, they're from Learning Resources. I think they were about £5. Um, and then, reading-wise, I've shown this before, but we are using a mixture of the Julia Donaldson Songbirds and the Biff Chip and Kip Up books. Um, we got the full sets of those from The Works. And we're just going to carry on working through those. There are quite a lot of books in there, so we are only about halfway through. So I don't think we're going to need any more reading books for a while yet. I've also started a reading diary for him for this year so that I can keep a record of all the different books that he reads. And then topic-wise, we're going to be covering a few different topics throughout the year. So I've got him a couple of these exercise books. They were from Bastons. Um, they were 99p. You can also get them on eBay. And they're just like the proper books that they use at school. So we've got a few of these and we're going to use them for like him to write about the topics that he's learned about. To stick in any kind of, you know, photos and leaflets and things from educational days out that we go on related to the topics that we do. And things like that. So the initial topics that we're going to be covering are, to start off with in September, we're going to be learning about space. So I've got these books on the solar system. They were from the works and I can't remember the exact price but they were around about £5 for that set. And I also got this um, sticky scape space book which he loves anything to do with stickers and it's a nice fold out one with a play scene. So yeah, he'll really like having a go at that and it just gives us another talking opportunity about space as well. Um, so space is going to be our topic for September. October we're going to be doing a topic about the ocean so yeah that's when we cover space another topic that we're going to be covering is the human body so I picked up this book what makes your body work um, this was from the works as well I think and it's quite good because it's got some like try it yourself kind of experiments in to kind of talk about how your body works and then try it yourself and I think that's quite good so it lets you like see your veins and things like that and I also picked up this, oh, everything I need to know for school um, book set. It says it's the complete Key Stage 1 homework helper. And yeah, it's got loads of books in. Um, so it's things like Castles and Knights, Earth, Volcanoes, Telling the Time, Ancient Rome, Vikings, Rivers and Lakes, Early People, Computer Coding, Reptiles, rocks and min minerals, science made easy, plants, forests, mammals, the human body, bugs, um, the desert, starry sky, rainforest, oceans, and then it's got things like English workbooks, it's got a dictionary, and it's got some maths workbooks as well, but I mainly bought it for things like the information books, because I just think that they're going to be just nice for him to go through when we're doing all these different kinds of topics and stuff so yeah they were quite cheap as well they were from the works too okay so that is all of the books that we're going to be using throughout the next year um with regards to the topics that we're going to be covering my plan is for us to start off in september covering the space topic 
Um, he's really interested in that and we've got quite a few nice resources to use for that as well which I've actually lent to my nephew so I can't show you but yeah we will do some kind of day in the life videos throughout the month and show you kind of what kind of things we're working on if you'd be interested in that as well. So the plan is September we're going to be doing a space topic um, in October we're going to do an oceans topic because we're actually going on a little cruise holiday in October so I think it'd be nice to tie in an oceans topic with that because it's like a hands-on kind of experience isn't it so that'd be quite good and then in November I'm gonna let Tyne choose an animal of his choice to research and write about and learn about I want him to do a few little pages about what he's learned about this animal and I would like him to do a little video of his own as well kind of like talking about what he's learned about the, the animal and we'll tie that in with going to the zoo and hopefully if he picks an animal that's there seeing the animal firsthand as well because um, I want him to learn how to research things and how to find out information about things for himself and then in um so that's the first couple of weeks in november that we're going to do that for the second half of november i want him to do the same thing but choose a historical figure um so any person from history of his choice that he can choose to research and learn about and again produce a little report about and then for december we're going to just focus on christmas around the world and obviously just on christmas and doing like a lot of christmas crafts and activities and stuff that they would be doing in school anyway um, and i'm gonna leave the topics for next year for now i'm gonna see how we get on with those topics because i like time to get involved with choosing the topics i usually let him choose his own and he kind of develops his own interest he's already asked if we can do world war one because we did world war two last year and now he said he'd like to learn about world war one so yeah we're gonna see what kind of how it goes and let him kind of choose some topics for next year and see what other ones we work on so i'll probably do another video about that after christmas when we are moving on in our curriculum so i hope you found this video useful if you're a home educator as well and you have done any videos about your own curriculum plans do let me know or link them below i'd love to come and watch them um, yeah, if you have any questions about home ed or about anything else, do let me know. I'll try my best to answer them if I can. And if you've got any other suggestions of what kinds of videos you'd like to see, either about home education or about anything else, let me know and I'll do my best to do that for you. If you haven't already, I'd really appreciate it if you would subscribe to our channel. I'm trying to upload videos once a week at the moment. And yeah, please give the video a thumbs up and leave me a comment below. Thanks very much for watching. I'll see you next time.